And one thing that's very unique about cannabinoids are that they seem to be effective in animal models of nerve-related pain or neuropathic pain. And opioids really do not work in neuropathic pain, but cannabinoids in the animal models do, which is one reason that led us to pursue the investigation of cannabis in patients with HIV-related uh, peripheral neuropathy. Uh, again, this is a, a common syndrome in patients with HIV infection. It can result either from the virus infection itself or from some of the drugs that we use to treat HIV, particularly the dideoxynucleosides, the backbones of therapy in the antiretroviral uh, regimens. Uh, opioids are not effective. Many providers use anticonvulsants, uh, which do have some other central nervous system effects. And many patients have told us that their pain actually is better uh, using uh, cannabis. Uh, and again, as mentioned in animal models, uh, cannabinoids seem to be effective. So with funding from the uh, University of California Center for Medicinal Cannabis Research, uh, we conducted uh, first a pilot study to do so-called proof of principle, and then we did a follow-on randomized placebo-controlled clinical trial to assess the analgesic effects of smoked marijuana in patients with HIV-related peripheral neuropathy. Uh, and to compare the analgesic effects of smoked marijuana on clinical and experimental pain. Last night I was eating dinner with uh, someone who mentioned, boy, I don't like those experimental pain models. It's not nice to give people pain if they already have pain. And that would be absolutely true, but if you take 16 people with HIV-related peripheral neuropathy and say we're gonna put you in our general clinical research center and let you smoke marijuana three times a day to see if your feet pain gets better, then a lot of people are gonna say, well, gee, duh, these are all gonna be people who want their feet pain to get better, so they're all gonna say yes. So you have to do something a little more objective. So we did do uh, an experimental pain model uh, during the time that we uh, investigated the impact on uh, the patient's chronic neuropathic pain. Uh, this was a, a study uh, where patients collected their pain in diaries at home for a week before they came into our general clinical research center for nine days, and then they had a week of follow-up at home. After two days in our general clinical research center, they were uh, smoked uh, three, uh, 3 3.5 percent NIDA cigarettes a day, and we again performed this heat capsaicin test. It's not quite like the one that Dr. Wallace described where he was injecting capsaicin. We just heated the skin to 40 degrees uh, for 15 minutes and then put some capsaicin cream on top of it, and that creates an area of funny feeling weirdness sort of around it in a box and we can measure that using brushes and foam, and then you look at the area of that box before and after smoking cannabis. So nobody's gonna be able to cheat on that one because it's, you know, you wouldn't even know what to, what to cheat. So it, it's something that's been used to investigate many different pain medications. And there's uh, the arm showing that it does get a little bit red and showing the measurements that we did around it. So that was done at the beginning uh, of the study and at the end of study, uh, and at the same time we were doing this experimental pain model, we were also asking the patients uh, to tell us how their neuropathic pain was acutely uh, following uh, their smoking of their 2 p.m. cigarette on those days. So the primary outcome measures of this study was the effect on their average daily pain as well as the effect on the post-smoking pain that was collected during the experimental pain model. And then also we were looking at the areas of experimentally induced funny feeling uh, as a secondary outcome. And our success rate was felt to be the number of patients who had a meaningful pain reduction. Now, I am not a pain expert, but my pain expert said a 30% or greater than 30% reduction in pain would be meaningful. Many other people say greater than 20% reduction in pain is meaningful, but we chose to be very conservative and set the bar quite high uh, in this clinical trial. We included patients with HIV-related peripheral neuropathy who had an average daily pain of at least 30 out of 100 on a scale, and we asked again, as we do in all of our studies, 
that our patients be experienced marijuana smokers uh, who knew how to inhale and knew what might occur. For the pilot study, I think we tried to get people to not smoke for 30 days, but it became very difficult. So, so ultimately, we eliminated that uh, because from our prior studies, we knew that drawing blood levels one 24-hour period after smoking, the THC levels were down to zero in the blood, and so we felt that this wouldn't impact negatively. So we did liberalize that entry criteria. For the pilot study, we enrolled mainly men uh, whose neuropathy was more frequently related to their drugs, and they had had an average duration of neuropathy of six years, which I think is pretty significant, uh, despite the fact that they were taking other pain medicines. And just skipping to the results, you can see they came in with an average score of about 50 out of 100. For the two days that they were admitted to our general clinical research center without smoking, just to let them adjust to the setting, their pain dropped by 10 points. But then when they started to smoke, uh, their pain dropped 20 points or got cut in half. During the time they were smoking, it remained down. And once they left the hospital, uh, their pain increased again, uh, but not quite to the uh, levels uh, that they had previously. 10 out of the 16 participants experienced a greater than 30% reduction in their average daily pain, which we thought was very nice. This is the effect of marijuana on post-smoke neuro neuropathy pain during the time that the experimental pain model was being done. And you can see here that on day one, there was a significant reduction from smoking the first cannabis cigarette. Whereas on day seven, the last day of the study where the patients had already been smoking three cigarettes a day, there was no reduction because their pain had already been very dramatically reduced, in some cases to no pain at all. So uh, <clears throat> in this study, uh, 13 of 16% experienced a greater than 30% reduction after smoking. And this just shows in the experimental pain model, 14 of 16% of the 14 of 16 participants <clears throat> experienced a greater than 30% reduction in their experimental pain. So everything really lined up very nicely. Everything was very supportive, the same numbers, the same uh, percent showing a reduction. So these results suggested that we did have an analgesic effect of smoke marijuana on HIV-related neuropathy, but it was in experienced smokers and it was unblinded. We used the effect size that we saw, 10 of 16, having a benefit to calculate the sample size that we would need to do a randomized placebo-controlled study of smoke marijuana. <clears throat> randomized placebo-controlled trials, as we know, are basically the gold standard for getting any drug approved. So we felt, why not do that uh, in HIV neuropathy? And, and we did do that, and we completed the study. The manuscript has uh, been already rejected by one journal and is currently under review at another journal. So the results I'm going to give you in confidence uh, because we don't want it too widely publicized before the journal will publish it. But the placebo group is, is the red line, and you can see they really had very little reduction in their pain. Uh, this is the marijuana group, and the uh, reduction uh, <clears throat> was more significant. 13 of 25 uh, smoking cannabis three times a day had a greater than 30% reduction in their average daily pain compared to six of 25 uh, receiving placebo. So that is why you do a placebo-controlled study, uh, because some patients did have a response, but twice as many did, and this was statistically significant. And also it correlated very well with what we saw in the experimental pain model in these patients as well. So, you know, we believe that this is evidence that smoked cannabis compared to placebo is more effective in the relief of pain, and that in fact the results here are very similar to what led to the approval of gabapentin or Neurontin as a treatment for HIV-related peripheral neuropathy. The effect is as large as it is for the currently most frequently used agent for treatment of HIV neuropathy. And again, the paper was rejected, so we'll see. <clears throat>